Howdy. You looking for a drink? It's too early. I'm looking for someone. A friend of mine. Maybe just hit town. He's about my height, black hair, and a smooth talker. We got a whole town full of smooth talkers. You might ask the clerk at the hotel over there. Thanks. Jenner, I've been waiting for you. Where are the others? They're still sniffing that cold trail you left back at Rim Springs. Me, I play hunches. Especially when it's worth $5,000. Butler want me that bad? That bad. I got a better idea. I'm coming around with my hands empty, all right? Let you and me make a deal. Them plates are worth more than 5,000, even if we split between us. You're too late. I don't have them. That's too bad. But they're still the 5,000. You think $5,000 is going to make you that fast with a gun? Butler said dead or alive. I'm betting you want it alive. That's a bad bet. off south. But he's carrying a bullet in his side. I seen him slump when it hit. He won't get far. This is the fourth robbery and murder this month, Marshal. We're getting mighty sick of it. Anybody know him? No. We were just trying to identify him. Took these out of his pockets. Anybody who's interested can get signed up for a posse, leaving as soon as we can get organized. Find anything interesting there? Nothing but $22 and a name. Will Cartwright. <laughs> Isn't Butler. Now, turn around. Slow. Who are you? My name's Cartwright.
Ben? Ben Cartwright. Yeah. You picked the rotten time to... to visit relatives, Uncle. Will? at once. Nothing like, like coming back from the dead, is there? <laughs> well, I don't know what happened, Will. But whatever it was, I thank God it wasn't you in that grave. Well, I, I still got a 50-50 chance of making it. Well, we got to get you to a doctor. No. Look, I, I've been carrying this slug around for two days. A couple more isn't going to make any difference. Well, you're talking nonsense now. No. That grave, the one you, you just paid your respects to, belongs to a man named Jenna. He was paid to kill me. Now, there are half a dozen more just like him, waiting to do the same thing. Unless they believe I'm in that grave. I was waiting here to see if someone would come and check it out. I never expected to find you. Well, Marshal Y. Edmund, your identification was found on the body. No, no, you, you're right out of here. Butler and his men, they, they don't like anybody called Cartwright. Who's Butler? Well, I can say he's a man that doesn't like Cartwrights. We're getting to a doctor now. Ben, I'm gonna do this my way. Well, you've gotta let me help you out of here. Will you get out of here? Well, <laughs> Nasty wound. Must have been carrying that bullet for quite a spell. You said it was a hunting accident? Yeah, it happened up in the mountains. That's so. The slug looks like it come from a 44. You fellas do your hunting with pistols? Of course, I guess a 44 will stop a deer as quick as a rifle, if you're close enough. You uh, live around here, do you? No, we're, uh, we're from Virginia City. In case you haven't heard about the shooting we had here. A man named Cartwright was killed. Witnesses say that the killer caught a slug before he got away. Huh? More than likely just a grudge fight between a couple of saddle tramps. Yeah. Well, so maybe the fellow got away, killed in self-defense. Could have. Of course, he'd have to be able to prove that. Well, maybe he can. Well, I don't know. The town's all prime for a quick hanging. Been too many robberies and murders. You saying that he's convicted already, even though he's innocent? Well, I'm saying he'd be smart to find a town that's friendlier to start with. One like, say, Virginia City. Of course, being a doctor, I'm more partial to saving lives and to seeing them choked off at the end of a rope. Then I guess I'm just plain getting too old to enjoy a good Saturday hanging. Uh, I doubt if you ever did enjoy one, doctor. You uh, better have the doctor over to Virginia City check that wound when you get back. Thanks. I'll do that, doc. How soon do you think he can travel? Tomorrow morning. Oh, he can sleep on a cot in the back room. Right. And just set yourself down easy. Turn over till morning. Oh, doctor. 
I'm not interested in any speeches. Past my bedtime, I gotta get up early and make some ranch calls. I'll be back about noon tomorrow, which is when I'm gonna make a legal report to the marshal about patching up a bullet hole. About noon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Here's a blanket. There's the back door. He's welcome to use either anytime he feels like it. Very good. Well, I'm locking up. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Now, Will, I'm going to go back to the hotel, just in case the marshal can fly. Uh, I'll, I'll be by to pick up in the morning early. You, you never give up. And when you're yourself again, then take care of your own affairs. You can do whatever you want to do. Good night. See you tomorrow. This is where I check out. We settled this last night. That was last night. But I feel better this morning. That's good. That's good. Now, now, wait a minute. Now, you, you helped me out of a tight spot, and I'm grateful. The only way to show how grateful is to put some distance between us. Oh. Yeah. Mm. All right. Oh, uh, your friend Butler is in town. He came to see me early this morning. Imagine some of his friends are with him. You can go out there and face them down single-handed, or you can get under that wagon top I've got outside and come with me. Well, when you put it that way, it sounds pretty clear-cut, doesn't it? Yeah, pretty clear-cut. All right, let's go. <laughs> Ponderosa by nightfall. Mm. Ponderosa. I remember my father talking about it. He said it was such a beautiful name for such rough and rugged country. Yeah, rough and rugged it was. Rough and rugged it is. He always said that you'd make a success of anything you ever tried. He had his big dreams, too. Only he died chasing gold in every wild goose corner of this world. Well, I'll tell you something about him. He may have died broke, but that man was never poor. Is it our No. You know, what are you looking for after he died? left without a trace. Well, I, I... I didn't want to be part of any other family. You see, I... I loved and admired my father. 
Maybe that's why I'm like him. I've chased my dreams around the world, too. As you can see, not too successfully. Well, let's let's get on to your Ponderosa and see what you've got. Surprise for you. That wire from the marshal in Pine City? It was a mistake. It's your cousin Will. Howdy, Will. It's Horse. Horse? Little Joe. Well, a pleasure to see you. Little Joe. Adam. Adam? It's like Lazarus rising from the dead. <laughs> Welcome to the Ponderosa, cousin. Now, we kind of tired you uh, boys save us any supper? We sure did, Paul. Come on, Will. Oh, what do you got there, Paul? Tell you about it later. Let me get this straight. You were going to bury that man out there under your name, right? Eh? That was my plan until your father showed up. Well, we'll figure that if Butler accepted the fact that he was dead, we could feel safe. Safe? Safe to do what? Spend the rest of his life running, using somebody else's name, living like an outlaw? If it'll make you feel any better, I make a rotten outlaw. I think I proved that. You mean with this fellow Butler you were talking about? He cranks out a very fancy $20 bill. Well, yeah. so it's counterfeiting this Butler was involved in, huh? Well, our friend prefers to call it the investment business. Nobody can say the Cartwrights don't go in for trouble in a big way. Tell me, how did you ever get hooked up with a fellow like Butler? Well, when you're between jobs, Uncle, you, you take what's handy. Handy? You can hardly call counterfeiting handy. Now, just relax. I didn't circulate any phony money. Butler said he needed a bodyguard. The money looked good, so I signed on. That's when I found out the money wasn't quite good enough. I didn't bother to say goodbye. And he wanted to kill you for that? Oh, well, not exactly. Uh, on my way out, I borrowed his engraving plates. Ah, uh, that's what Butler was looking for. <laughs> well, this food has made me feel like a new man. Now, if uh, someone can lend me a razor, maybe I can look like one. Oh, well, some hot water and razor in the kitchen. Come on. Our cousin Will's got himself into a little trouble. Yeah. All that talking he did about taking those plates from that fella Butler, he didn't mention nothing about turning them over to the authorities, did he? That's right. And what about this running away, Pa? You're not going along with that, are you? I wanted him to give himself up. But I couldn't let him do it in Pine City. They'd have strung him up. It's an open and shut case of self-defense. So I'm hoping that he'll give himself up to Sheriff Coffey here in Virginia City. <sighs> did he agree to that? No, not yet, but I think he will. At least I hope he will. I think we ought to try to persuade him to. You know, I got a feeling our cousin needs a little more help than just a shave. Well, that's exactly what we've been talking about, and I think we're the ones that ought to help him. Now, if you'll accept it, he seems to be pretty satisfied with his own plans. Look, Bob, we know he's a Cartwright. We know he's a relative, but how do we know he's telling the truth? I may not be the best judge of character in the world, but I think... And not because he's a Cartwright or a relative. I think that basically he's an honest man. Yeah, but, Paul, how are we going to persuade him to give himself up? I don't know. But at least let's show a little faith in him. All right.
Bullet holes in these plates? That's right. I put them there myself. Just in case I didn't get a chance to turn them over to the law. Now get me a horse and I'll leave. Put the coffin out in the barn. We'll attend to it in the morning. Thanks. For what? Well, for finally agreeing with me. What are we agreeing about? Well, to bury that coffin out there under my name. You still think that's the thing to do? Of course it is. Listen, when Jenna doesn't show up, and Butler remembers that you brought a body back here, he's gonna come nosing around, the way he would have at Pine City if you hadn't shown up. So he noses around and finds a grave with Will Cartwright's name on it, then what? Well, show it to him. I'll be out of here by then. Where are you going? Maybe China. I've never been to China. The world's full of places, Ben. That's right, world's full of places. Full of people, too. What about people, Will? Have you ever found people more important than places? Well, sure, a girl now and then, a few friends. What are you getting at? I'm just trying to figure out who you are. Well, that's simple. I like the sea, I like uh, French food, I like to dance a fandango, uh, if the girl's pretty. Cards, anything that's going. That's me. You uh, might put all that together and say that I'm my father's son. Are you? You forget that I knew your father. We were boys together. We grew up together. I went to sea, but whenever I came back, we managed to meet somewhere, somehow. We'd talk and plan and dream. But there comes a time when a man stops dreaming and settles down to make one dream a reality, like I did, like your father would have done if he'd lived. What about you? Not me. And not my father. I knew him better than you did. I guess we'll never know what your father would have done, will we? But there's one thing that we both know about him. He was a proud man. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And he was proud of his name. And he would never have done what you want to do. Discard his name, bury it, run off to China or wherever, on the pretext that it's adventure. Not John Cartwright. Maybe Will Cartwright, but not John. Well, guess I had a hard trip and tired. I'm going to bed. Tomorrow we'll put whatever name you want on that grave. All set, Paul. Good. Sure glad you made this decision, Will. Well, one thing I learned drifting around the world, there are a few men, uh, uh, not too many, mind you, that uh, are smarter than me. Will? Your resurrection is a most welcome surprise. Introduce a business associate of mine, Mr. Gannett. And another member of my staff. And in the unlikely event they should require some assistance, three others.
It's me you want, not them. You're only partially right. I want you and the plates. I buried them. Now, if you let them go, I'll show you where. Well... How about it, Butler? Do we ride out of here or not? should have let me go with them. You could have all been killed. Well, and after you just decided to keep the Cartwright name, we couldn't let the likes of them change that. We ain't about to lose a cousin that easily. Especially we've hardly had a chance to get acquainted yet. And give it a little time. You'll get used to us. How about it, Will? You got the time? All for one, huh? Well, it's better than one all alone. Well, I kind of think it's going to take some getting used to. Well, take your time, Will. Take your time. You might get to like the idea. Let's get to town, boy. <laughs> 